Hi folks, welcome back to Principles of Kinesiology, episode four. So far in our series, we've been covering a variety of ailments, starting with the foot, working our way up through the knee. Now I'd like to cover a more broad sense, where we cover the leg in general, other conditions, and we'll even go into a bit of the pelvis structure. So stick around and take some time to study these next few principles. Let's roll the intro. There are several conditions of the leg, some of which we've covered in previous episodes, such as plantar fasciitis and Osgood slaughters. Other conditions may include sciatica, lateral snapping hip syndrome, IT band syndrome, Achilles tendonitis, shin splints, pulled or spasmed adductors, or inward rotators. All of these have different and various causes, some are related, but most, if not all, are related to some aspect of the person's lifestyle and can be avoided with awareness and proper conditioning. The back of the leg has three key muscles known as the hamstrings, the bicep femoris, the semimembranosus, and the semitendinosus. This area is one of the most common sites of muscle pulls and can be reduced with proper stretching. Muscle soreness resulting from exercise peaks 24 to 48 hours after a workout. Stretching immediately after is the best way to reduce muscle soreness. Delaying is less effective but still helps. Good stretching techniques always include proper posture and alignment in the direction of greatest pull. Stretching should be felt in the body of the muscle and pull at both ends equally. The sarcolemma is a tendon sheath encompassing the entire muscle and used for neural transmission and calcium distribution. It can stretch up to 50% of its resting length. The stretch reflex also known as the myotactic reflex, is the response of your muscles to strain. When you move into a stretch position, the muscles being pulled will contract hard to prevent too much stretching. This is to maintain stability in the joint and to prevent rupturing or coming away from the bone. The stretch reflex is useful to assist in jumping, throwing, punching, or kicking. However, it also hinders us from achieving greater flexibility Ballistic stretching engages this response rapidly, which may desensitize the muscle and can lead to injury, but does almost nothing for actually stretching the muscle groups. As a culture, we sit too much. When a muscle is not in use, it atrophies, becoming weak to the point of doing only what is required. The tendons also atrophy to the shortest resting place. By sitting too much, the tendons in our leg, especially the thigh, will shorten and pull in standing positions, creating imbalances and misalignments, particularly in the pelvis. Tight hip flexors and lumbar lordosis are examples of this cultural epidemic. Tight hip flexors also play a part in sway back, pelvic inclination, low back pain, muscle spasms, and anterior snapping hip syndrome. In this depiction, we see an example of an improper stretch, as well as a proper stretch. On the left, the stretcher may be able to isolate certain parts of the quadricep, but is not able to gain the full benefit of a stretch with proper posture. Nudging around in a stretch is often a useful method to discover tight areas that need to be isolated and given more attention, but cannot replace the proper technique of stretching with good alignments pulling at both ends of the muscle and focused in the body of the muscle. Golgi organs are receptors which provide the nervous system with information about muscle tension and are located around where the muscle meets the tendon. When the muscle is maxed by stretching or contraction, the Golgi receptors block neural transmission and the joint is able to stretch as far as the connective tissues will allow. This is really only achieved when the muscle is able to pull away from the bone. We can utilize the Golgi tendon response in stretching. Activate a partial Golgi response by using someone or something for resistance.
contract muscles against the resistance as hard as possible and hold for 10 to 12 seconds. Relax and immediately move into a desired stretch position to overcome the stretch reflex. Hold the stretch for around 25 to 35 seconds. Repeat one or two more times. If you desire to stretch longer, continue on your own without this method. There are various methods used for stretching, some being more effective than others. Above, this stretch puts undue pressure on the knee capsule and can cause discomfort or injury if done often. The same stretch and benefits can be achieved by bringing the leg around and placing the foot by the inner thigh, like a half-crossed leg seated position, without putting pressure on the knee. The stretch reflex can be overcome in two other ways. One, conscious relaxation and lengthening in a stretch to prevent muscle contraction. Two, by reciprocal inhibition, which is chemical in nature, temporary and partial. It works by consciously contracting the antagonistic muscle groups before moving into a stretch, but only works with the large muscle groups such as in the thigh. Stretch the hamstrings always working both sides. Move the feet outward facing to stretch the bicep femoris below. Move the feet inward to stretch the semitendinosus and membranosus. These two are smaller muscles that work synergistically. Use the method of nudging around during a stretch to find places of tightness, then work on those areas by focusing your attention and your stretch. Instead of ballistic stretching, use a pulsing action which is more controlled and will benefit much more. The socket of the hip joint is formed by the joining of the three pelvic bones to form the acetabulum. Range of motion at this joint is determined by the depth of the acetabulum, as well as the relative placement of the femur and type of torsion in the femur neck. The pelvis is formed by the combination of two os coxae. The os coxis is made up of three bones which ossify or harden by the age of three. Before then, they are separate and made up of the ilium and ischium and the pubis. In this illustration, the arrows indicate direction of action of the iliopsoas muscle. These are all very deep muscles and play a vital role in stabilizing the structure of the hip joint with the rest of the body. Pay special attention to the origin and insertion of these muscle groups, the psoas, iliacus, abductors, gluteus medius, and gluteus minimus, as well as the adductors of the inner thigh. Sciatica, or piriformis syndrome, is a problem with the sciatic nerve which runs down the leg from the spine. Symptoms of sciatica can occur from many problems originating in the spinal column, but one problem can come from simply having tight inward rotators. Here are a few examples of techniques for stretching the piriformis muscle. The problem occurs when the piriformis muscle begins to put pressure on the sciatic nerve. Lab number four, stretching and the upper leg. Review the various stretching techniques we've covered. Find areas you need to work on. Identify any potential conditions, snapping hip or other. Discuss ways to strengthen and stretch these muscle groups and avoid injury. Notice any compensations. Do the hips sit level? Lay on your back with your feet in the air and have a partner look for differences in leg length. Also discuss the hip. Make a best guess determination as to how your hip socket may be built and talk about the strengths and weaknesses. Identify ways to overcome any of the other additional conditions that were mentioned at the start of this episode. Hey, thanks for watching everyone. You know how YouTube works. Do the YouTube things. Like, subscribe, and share. And stick around for the crazy bonus YouTube video. Not all of you will be able to touch the start behind your back. You should find that if you do this regularly enough, that you'll soon develop the ability to do that. Okay. Next one, uh, again, link your hands there. Now put the, push them as hard as you can above your head. Now bend over so on the waist. Just keep looking up, and you're going to roll there. Okay. So it looks like this on the side. There. 